name is Salma Hijab. I'm Egyptian, and this is something that can be very easily identified from my accent. Everybody's telling me you're talking in Egyptian English. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a multimedia journalism student at AUC. I got a full scholarship there, funded by the USAID. And I'm also a blogger and an activist, and I do lots of volunteer activities in Egypt. And I had a very long flight coming from Egypt to the US for the first time to come to, with, to you to talk about a little bit uh, Egyptian news and how they are trying to combat several changes, including the communication gap that we have among the community. So as an Egyptian journalist intern, I go cover uh, events in the street. And this photo I took last, mo last month in Tahrir Square it's part of a funeral prayer for one of the activists who was called Muhammad al-Shafi. He was just an ordinary Egyptian youth who got killed in events and clashes that happened last January. And in that um, funeral prayer, several activists were there and there are banners that says, uh, holds the, president, the current president accountable and they are like uh, praying for him. If I want to describe how it's like now in Egypt, you wouldn't like it very much because as Egyptian youth, we feel, a little, we feel a little bit depressed, we feel a little bit demotivated, we hate how the community now is polarized between different ideologies, different religions, different perspectives, and I, I won't even mention how the safety status now has gotten low, everybody started to worry, we are about to have an economic crisis, such and such. So right now, we are not happy, we do not feel that we have fulfilled our dreams. But I can get back two years before and tell you about this story that I have, that picture that I have taken in Tahrir uh, in January 2011. This was my first time going to Tahrir during the 18 days. And this time I have, I will, I have never and I will never forget because I saw this family with their two kids. This on the right, he says, I'll die for my country to live. And the other one on the left, he says, let's protect our country. During that time, it was my first time ever to see such huge numbers of Egyptians coming from very different backgrounds, from very different segments and society in one place, in one place, and agreeing with each other on something. It was amazing and it was unforgettable. After, um, after the 18 days and how we became the heroes of the community. Oh, the youth of Facebook and Twitter. And they even used the term, the pure youth of the Egyptian revolution. Like we are angels from heaven. Like we have done nothing wrong in ourselves. We just came to, serve, to save Egypt. For months, we were heroized in media. We were heroized everywhere. And we were trying hardly to start accomplishing our dreams and start fulfilling it. But we found it's not that easy. It's really, really hard. It will really, really talk, take long time. And so we didn't stop. We started doing protests and we started um, again protesting and protesting against several stuff. So I'd like to move forward again to um, July 2011 when there was a, a march going to Abbasiya Square by several activists like going to protest against some military violations that has been, doing, has been gone. And the activists when they went there they found the neighborhoods, the people of Abbasiya, attacking them, things, thinking that they are thugs. It resulted in one death and it was a lot, a, lot, a lot of chaotic stuff. For hours, activists online started whining about it, thinking, oh my God, there's really a huge gap between us, people who think and do and, and, and accomplish stuff online and the, the rest of the community. Like, as you know, the Egyptian, the, the Egyptian percentage of users isn't big. It's like now it's 35, the last, list, last uh, statistics I've read. And it's ab after the revolution. Like, not everybody has access online. So people started whining online. They, s they felt it's over. But suddenly, I saw someone posting on uh, Twitter a tweet thing saying, um, let's start getting out of the bubble and start going to the street and talking with people. And I didn't know him back then, but he used this hashtag called the tweet Shara. Shara is an Arabic word that means street. So he was asking the online activist who stuck to with the window of freedom that we had on Twitter before the revolution and left the whole door that we opened after the revolution. And he asked them to start going out and talk with people. 
And after some interaction, I liked the idea so much, and I said, okay, that's why not do it? Why not start an initiative and, and ask people to do this? So within a few hours, we had a Facebook page, we had a Twitter account, we had a logo, and it was so sp spontaneous. And those who did the thing and started it didn't know each other. It was pure crowdsourcing. When we started it, we asked people online just to go in the street to tweet their ideas, tweet their minds about the revolution, about certain stuff, and to like fix the misconceptions that the Egyptian street have in, their, in, in taxis, in public transports, at work, at home, and come and share with us later their experiences, whether they failed or they succeeded, and how it was. We had really good interaction back then. We were so happy about it. And then we thought later, Let's get the thing bigger. Why not have organized some um, groups to go and talk with people in the street and have a certain theme? And so we started doing it when uh, there was the parliamentary election thing going and we, were, we wanted to encourage as much people as we can to go and vote because this was the first parliamentary election after uh, the revolution and we wanted it to really represent the people. So this is me in Izbit Khairallah. It's one of the suburbs in Cairo. And I was asking that guy there, what are you going to do if someone bribed you and asked you to go vote for a certain candidate? He said I would just throw the money at his face. I don't care. I just want to vote for who would represent me. Back then, it was really um, encouraging and, and impressive. I have to say that after, those, um, after doing some success in Cairo, uh, other volunteers in different places in Egypt wanted to do the same, the same. And it was a little bit at the beginning hard how to manage doing those stuff from, uh, from Cairo, especially that I'm an Egyptian girl who wouldn't be able to travel everywhere due to some stuff I would explain later. <laughs> and um, I thought that I have to find some system to manage this. As I'm a volunteer in TEDx, I was a volunteer in TEDx Cairo and I was a co-founder of TEDx AUC. I really like the TED system of managing stuff from away, the TEDx events. So I asked the volunteers who are in several uh, governorates to, to, to report to me and report to Cairo how stuff are going there. So we managed to be in Damietta, in Asyut, in Sharqiyya, Suhaeg, Mansoura, Alexandria, and hopefully we'll be still going down. Uh, I don't want to take much time, but I'd like to, hi uh, to shed some highlight on many, uh, some of the volunteers who are, have been really doing a great job during those days. So Ahmed Manadilo from Damietta says uh, that the Damietta team of volunteers are now dealing with each other as a family. This is Hatim also from Damietta. Fatma is the organizer of Alexandria. She has been really doing a great job, and she doesn't even want to get any credit for it. Karim and Mohammed, they live in Saudi Arabia, but they contribute with us sometimes with money and sometimes with achieving some online tasks. Fadi, he is a graphic designer. He has done the logo. He has done many uh, designs for us, and he lives in Virginia. I'm not here just to impress you guys about how magnificent we are and how empowered and how passionate, because really we are now um, facing many challenges for, for expanding uh, our initiative. One of them is because of funding. When we started this, we didn't want to have fund because Egyptian street, people in the street would ask us, where did you get this? Who is funding you? Do you belong to a certain political uh, party? Those are questions from people who are really skeptical. So right now, we will have to restructure our set of rules of, to accept fund to help us uh, expand the project. We also um, want to implement the professional discourse because at the beginning we counted so much on enthusiastic and motivational youth, but after the mood changes that has been done in Egypt now, um, certain volunteers and people just started to lose hope and stop. And we don't want this to do. We do, we do want to have a sustainable thing. So we would have to um, get, uh, get organization uh, skills and get uh, trainers who would train us and get us to the level that we aspire. And I'd like to say that if you wanted to contact us, you can reach, this is our handles uh, via Facebook, Twitter, and email. Last thing that I want to mention is that although we have been going through uh, a lot these days and I have to admit that throughout the two years, I have changed a lot. I am not myself as I was when I was just a, a girl, uh, very, um, 
very hopeful, very uh, dream dreamer. I would call myself a big dreamer. I was a big dreamer, and I'm still a, I still am. But um, I do still believe in the Egyptian youth. I do still believe in our power to change because youth uh, and the energy of youth shouldn't be wasted on on many stuff. Yeah, we should make use of it, and that's how I believe that the future is ours. And this is a photo of me and many of the volunteers in, uh, in very different governorates together in Cairo one time. Thank you.